I know. It's cool. All right, we'll go ahead and open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day today, and thank you for letting us gather to uh, worship you and, and get to know you better, Lord. And I pray that you, uh, that the, your words, not mine, and uh, Lord, thank you for your perfect word, and that I, I pray that it touches each one of us tonight. Uh, these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. So... Um, I had said before I was uh, coached volleyball for about 20 years, and it wasn't until I started. Um, started working here for the church um, and getting into the ministry with the kids that I realized how much I was being taught for this 20 years ago. And there were things that I was, you know, would learn from watching another coach or whatever to, to help the kids. A lot of it was to get out of their own heads and just focus on right now what's going on. And it's been so cool to see how the things I was saying for them that as far as I knew at that time, it was about the court. You know, let's, let's do this, get this. And one of the ones I, I, I love my little catchphrases. And, uh, and so one of them we had was, the team had a bad habit of showing like they were down. And so there's, you know, bad faces and all that. And I was like, you're telling the other team right now, you're done. And I was like, so we kind of to make them laugh a little bit, we'd say, hey, fix your face. Okay, fix it. And that would make them laugh a little bit and kind of get them out of it. Um, one of the other ones that I liked was the enemy of zeal is time. And we'd explain that to them as like, yeah, you come to a practice, we do a boot camp. It's a great practice. It's awesome. And then as time goes on, it fades. A lot of these kids were looking to play college ball. And so I was like, look, y'all gotta every day wake up and show up for practice, ready to bust your tail. I was like, I said, because unfortunately those college coaches will say, you know what? Thank you for your year, we're gonna move on from you. I was like, you know, they don't have to keep you for four years. As I got into ministry, I realized that the parable of the sower, um, specifically the, the seed that falls on stony places, made a lot more sense to me with that. That you come in, you get a, a good word, yeah, it's great, it grows, and then time passes, the sun hits, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's gone. Um, and then as I was still learning and, and going even further into it, um, Luke 9:23. then he said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And that's something I told the kids. I was like, you're gonna have to wake up every day and choose what you do. If you wanna be better at volleyball, you gotta choose that. And now, now where I'm at here, it's like, if you wanna be closer with God, you have to choose that every single day. And so it's been so cool learning that I have been taught already a lot of stuff that now it's just taking on a whole new meaning. And uh, one of my favorite ones was a, a demonstration that we would do. And so I told y'all last time I was gonna have an activity for you. So if you're willing and able, stand up. And be careful, but I'd like for you to reach back and put your arm behind you any way you can. And while you're doing this, I'd like you to pretend that you have a, uh, one of those big thermos mugs, okay, and it's empty, and you're just holding it back here. And as we're sitting here holding it, I come around and start just pouring a little bit of water, pouring a little bit more. It's getting heavier and heavier. And at some point, this is going to get so heavy, so out of control, that that is the only thing you can think of. You cannot think of anything else but my shoulder's killing me. This is, this is bad. This is bad. All right, you can put it down. I made the youth group read, I read through the, the verses that I'll go to while I did that. <laughs> Won't do that to y'all. All right, now go in front of you. Same situation, still holding the cup. A Little bit easier, probably could do it a lot longer, but still at some point it's gonna get so heavy you can't hold it anymore. Your shoulders are gonna kill you. All right, down by your side. This is rest. All right, go ahead and y'all can sit down now. So, arm back here is to represent condemnation. And that is a trick the devil loves to use, is to make you think about those previous sins, make you think about the things that you did in the past, and all the terrible with it. And they will sit there and just 
fill you up and fill you up and fill you up to the point that all you can focus on is your previous sin, which means you're not focused on him. And so another little goofy quote is like, if you're focused on sin, then you're not focused on him. And so that's something too that has, again, that was something I used with the kids. It was like, if you're sitting here thinking about your past mistakes on the court, you're probably gonna make another past mistake. You're sitting there worried about the past you just shanked. And it's like, oh, okay, and then the next ball comes in. I put it, I, I, I bet you that the next one goes behind you too. And so it's, again, it's letting go of this. And so Romans 8, one through six, if y'all wanna turn there with me. And so Romans 8, one through six, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Jesus and Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ has made me free from, law, from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do and what it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. And what I like to see with that was condemned past tense. It's done. There's no condemnation through Christ anymore. Um, that the righteous requirement for the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things and the things of the spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And so similarly, what I was telling the kids when, when playing is if you're focused on this bad stuff, you're not gonna be focused on what's going on right now. And that's what, with the youth, you know, what we try to get to them is one, let go of your past. It's, it's over with, You've, if, especially if you're in Christ and have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, that's over with. And the other one that we, is those who haven't found Christ yet, that's another trick the devil likes to use is, no, you're not good enough. Think about all these things. You're not good enough to come to Jesus yet, which we obviously know is, is junk. Um, but those are... That's something that I you know, learned through that one. And then now we go to the one in front, which is obviously anxiety. It's worry, looking ahead, worrying about if I'm gonna make that on the court, make that next mistake or whatever it is. And with, with, with the Lord, it's looking ahead, worrying about our finances, worrying about where, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, our next meal might be. Um, there's you know, some that are moving right now and trying to find a house that's not way out of control pricing and all that stuff. And so again, it's a trick of the enemy to get you focused on something other than the Lord. And, uh, and so it, the reality is with this is anxiety is a form of fear. And I, it says it a few times in the Bible, I, uh, you know, 300 or so. Do not fear, fear not, stop fearing. So, you know, stop it. Um, Obviously, it's, that's easier said than done. We know that. And so it's then turning to God with every part of it, putting your faith in him, letting him guide you to your next step. And so uh, Proverbs 12, 25, just anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. And then Philippians 4, 6 through 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And again, that's one of, of yeah, we, we have to pay bills. You know, I, money is what it is. We, we can't live without it, unfortunately, to, to live. But to put your concern on money only is where the devil gets you every time. And I've been guilty of it myself. And like when I'm talking with the kids, I'm usually giving them examples of how this is impacted me what I've done uh, or what I've gone through and you know when when changing jobs there was a a big big worry of how financially were we gonna do this and wife and I just you know what this is where he wants us so we're gonna have to just turn it over and I, I kid you not the day that we both signed the paperwork on our new job or this I signed the paperwork to, to leave my job she got a phone call saying hey we need you actually to start tomorrow, not in a couple weeks. Amen. And so, and then within a very short time, the job went from kind of an entry level, you know, just fill in where they need to, uh, she's now the executive assistant at, at the law firm she works for. 
And it's amazing what he has provided when we just gave it all to him. And now it does come with its trials and tribulations. There's no question about that. Um, but as, as long as we keep turning and handing it over to him, he continues to provide. He continues to show a way through it. And um, the last one, when we talked about the arms being down by our side, you know, that's rest in Jesus. And that's where he talks about, you know, constantly that he is our rest. As if we give it to him, we will find our rest in him. And uh, last one is uh, Matthew 6, 25 through uh, 34. Actually, this one is uh, back referencing worrying about your life. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, uh, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It is not, li is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valued than me, or than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit of stature? So why, why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to, the, to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which, day, which today is and tomorrow is, thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For the heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all, things, all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own, own things. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles. And so that's where God's, Jesus is telling us right there, red letter, hey, I got you. Just, just come to me, and I got you. And one that I've, I've seen, unfortunately, and even we've gone over this with the kids, is this part that gets missed, and, and sadly, way too often, is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And a lot of times that's missed. And it's sad in the kids, we've talked about that, that you gotta, you gotta go there first. You gotta turn to him first and let him then guide you. And it'll change what you think your desires are. And that's what I, I've learned very recently over the past year is, is that he changes your desires. It, and it's crazy. And it, you don't even realize, oh, that's better. Okay. All right, now I see why you're doing this. Okay, cool. Um, just, I know um, when I was coaching, my last year to coach, uh, I started missing uh, my, my daughter's, uh, one of her games for one of my games. And I was like, nope, nope, that's not why I'm doing this. I gotta get out of this. And so I, I stepped away from coaching. It was a great last year, loved it. And then we found the King's Trail. I came to my first men's night and I was sitting back there and I was just kind of like talking with some of the guys and we were getting into the study and I was like, man, this is cool. I was like, why haven't I come to these before? And all of a sudden it was like, uh, because you were in the gym on Monday nights? I was like, oh, oh, okay. So that's why you pulled me, oh, okay, now I see it. And it's cool seeing how he just continues to work and move. Um, the last uh, verse is um, about rest and it's Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavily, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And it's, man, that's a, that's a passage right there that just hits when you, when you realize it and you see it. Because it doesn't mean that the trials are any easier. They're still there. But when you turn it over, it's almost, it's almost weird that you... You see the trials and you know what's going on. And you see the attacks coming, but you know why. It's because you're getting closer and closer and you're giving him that rest. Um, the last thing I'd like to finish with uh, is uh, when I was working at AT&T, I was at a stop to eat at KFC for, for lunch and I got my food and about this time, a group of about eight or nine men walk in they're getting their food, and I was like, man, that looks like a group of men. I'd love to sit at that table and just hear their stories. And so I you know, sat over in my corner, ate my, ate my lunch. 
I was getting up to leave, and as I was leaving, I saw them all start pulling out Bibles and setting them on the table. So I was like, oh, hey, what y'all studying? And they're like, oh, we do a little Bible study. We get together once a week, and da, 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 da. And I was like, cool, cool. And it's like, he goes, sit down. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I sat down, and it was one that, you know, my, my company was very strict on our time sitting. They had GPS and all that. And so I was like, okay, I only got a few minutes, but yeah, I'll give, I'll give everything I got. And they got into the message and come to find out a couple of them were pastors, previous pastors. They all came from different churches. They just knew each other. They called themselves the lunch bunch. And uh, they were just a, an amazing group of men. And so I left that day and for probably another two, three months, I kept going up there. I didn't realize what day it was that they were meeting. So I just, I ate a KFC way too much because I was trying to catch these men again. And so finally I got there on a Tuesday and that's what day it was. I show up and sure enough, here they come walking in. I was like, yeah. And they walked up and they're like, hey, you joined us that one time. I was like, yes, sir. And they're like, come on, join, sit and eat with us. And I was like, absolutely. And this time I came prepared. I had my Bible in my truck, so I had it, sat down. He gave this awesome little message. And, um, but the, to finish, the, this pastor, he was like, and uh, he preached on, um, the little message was on Psalm 23. And he was like, you know, we all know this one. This one's pretty, he goes, but he flipped it on us. And he gave it a different way, which actually is another message that I feel the Lord wants me to give at another time. But the way he finished it, and he had us, he's like, he goes, I want y'all to, to say this with me. He's like, when, I, when we get to the personal pronouns, he's like, I want you to say them as if you're writing this. He's like, we know David wrote this. He goes, but I want you to say it. So I'd like for y'all to do that with me now. Um, so when we get to the my's, eyes, me's, that y'all say it with me. And uh, I'll give you a minute, uh, Psalm 23. And man, sitting there with those, with those men and listening to their stories and just, <laughs> run away, kid. Sorry, cuteness. Eh? <laughs> um. <laughs> and so that was, uh, you know, it's one that I'm still trying to figure out on a Tuesday to get up there again, but they, they meet all the way down, like Dallas, Dallas. It's like, that's a, that's a tough drive. So, um, so y'all ready? Yes, amen. All right. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores he leads in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I, through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil. You, your rod and your staff, they comfort. You prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. You anoint with oil, runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of and will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And so, again, Psalm 23 is, is a psalm to me that has changed and changed and changed the more you read it and the more you look at it from one stance to another. And so, in this one, Psalm 23 really spoke to me in a sense of rest. And that, look at the very last one, and, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I, that's that's some that's some pretty good assurance right there, and that to me gives gives all the worth of giving all the anxiety over, worth letting go of the past and all the the things that we did. That amazingly, he just forgets, and he decides to let it go. And it's like that's I don't understand that, <laughs> but. He is that graceful or, and that merciful. And I, that's what has changed my walk with the Lord is from you know, just having salvation to understanding that he is my Lord and not just my savior. And that was something that I didn't understand for a very long time. And I tell my kids all the time, I was like, unfortunately, a lot of people accept salvation. They strap on that helmet of salvation and then try to barrel through life head first. I was like, and you're going to run into a lot of walls and you're going to stumble and you're going to fall. 
And uh, Pastor Jason made the example, uh, analogy a few weeks ago of, of riding up to the top floor of a building. And, you know, you, would you rather ride in the elevator or would you rather take the stairs? And we brought that up into the youth group and one of the kids got real anxious. She was like, I know we're like, okay, what do you got? She's like, oh my goodness, that has just like multiplied for me. She's like, you know, when you go and you push the button and you're waiting and it just, it's like on the fifth floor and you're just like, oh, okay, fine, I'm gonna go take the stairs. She's like, that's God's timing. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, you know what? I like it. The more of that has come through, again, is, is, is patience and God's timing, which is difficult beyond all reason, but that's where we can find our rest, is waiting on his time. So that is it for me tonight. Brother Tim, would you close us in prayer? Father God, we love you. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for the message that uh, our brother shared with us tonight. Lord, uh, may we lay